Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today, we're going to be talking about a relatively rare variant of a pretty common tumor. But first, a few things. If you like this video, please click the like button at the base of the screen. In addition, check us out on our website, Facebook, and Instagram, all entitled Adventures in Neuropathology. In addition, this video is meant for medical education purposes only and is not intended to be used for medical advice. If you or a loved one have a question or a concern about your health, please talk to your doctor. Okay, let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about um, a meningioma, but a particular type or subtype of meningioma. So um, first, here we have a low power image of a lesion. And we're going to be looking uh, around here. And so in this area here, I have this blown up where we can see that there are pretty typical features of meningioma. Uh, in addition, there's a few little um, macrophages here and there. There's um, a mitotic figure right there. Um, but in, um, in general, we see that there are uh, uh, a syncytial uh, appearance to the cytoplasm here. The cells have this uh, round sort of egg-shaped nuclei um, and, and this is a very classic appearance of meningioma. Okay, but when we go to other areas of this tumor, uh, we're going to look right in here, we'll see that there's a, a different um, appearance to this tumor. So here we have, this is a up close and personal view of this uh, tumor and notice how it looks a little different. So uh, we're gonna um, look a little bit closer here and that's where this inset is. So I'm just gonna make this inset a little bit larger and we can see that the cells, they look kind of separated from each other. They're less syncytial than the other cells that we saw. And syncytial means that um, uh, the cytoplasm of one cell kind of interdigitates very intimately with the cytoplasm of another cell so that on light microscopy, we can't really tell where one cell ends and the other begins. But that's not the case for this area of the tumor. We can see that there are uh, pretty prominent uh, cell borders here and, and uh, here we can uh, definitely tell where where one cell ends and the next begins. And notice how these cells, they, they look like they have little um, pregnant bellies hanging off of them. So if you were looking down on the head of a pregnant woman uh, where the nucleus makes up the 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 body and the head and the and um, the, you see the belly kind of sticking out there, uh, these are little um, cytoplasmic um, little inclusions here that look very odd. Um, and look different from what we saw before. And this is a classic rhabdoid appearance of uh, these tumors where the, where the nuclei are kind of pushed off to one side and you have a cytoplasm that looks like it's full of um, protein or some sort of material or something. Um, if we, if we take a look here, there are areas where we can see that there is more typical syncytial um, cytoplasm and more typical um, uh, a meningioma on the left side of the screen. And then uh, we can see these cells kind of turning into these more rhabdoid cells on the right side of the screen. And this is very typical for uh, rhabdoid meningiomas. Uh, it's very rare that rhabdoid meningiomas happen that are exclusively rhabdoid in appearance. Oftentimes, they'll be intermixed with more typical um, um, uh, areas that have more typical appearance of meningioma. Here's another viewpoint. Again, very prominent cell borders um, and these cytoplasmic uh, in inclusions that kind of push the nuclei off to the side here. And again, um, oftentimes uh, menin the rhabdoid variant of meningioma will have uh, increased mitotic activity and they'll have necrosis and they'll have prominent nucleoli um, and they might have anaplastic features. Um, and th these all contribute to the very poor prognosis that rhabdoid meningiomas typically impart. 
and the WHO World Health Organization classifies these tumors as grade 3, which is the worst grade that you can get for meningiomas because they typically are um, uh, clinically aggressive and patients don't tend to um, do very well with these types of tumors. There has been some suggestion that maybe the rhabdoid um, appearance itself does not impart uh, the grade 3 um, aggressive clinical behavior, that it's more associated with increased proliferation and anaplastic features and, and um, those sorts of things that can happen um, in rhabdoid meningiomas that impart this aggressive clinical activity. So that's a, a very brief overview of rhabdoid meningiomas, uh, WHO grade 3 uh, meningiomas. Please join us next time on Adventures in Neuropathology. Check us out at our Facebook page, Instagram, and uh, website, all entitled Adventures in Neuropathology. Okay, thank you.